Welcome to COVID Act Now's COVID Response Simulator tutorial video. This tool helps you simulate non-pharmaceutical interventions, or NPIs, such as closing schools, restricting business activities, and canceling large events. In the chart on your screen, the black line represents the number of COVID cases in a scenario with zero NPIs. Social distancing is represented by the yellow line, sheltering in place by the red line, and NPIs by the green line. By looking at the green line, you can see how these NPIs may impact the spread of COVID in your community, including changes in case numbers and hospitalizations. Today, we will show you how to simulate these interventions represented by the green line and find what works in your community. There are many other things you can do with this COVID response simulator, but for the sake of brevity, we won't be covering them in this video. Before using this tool, we recommend reviewing the orange tab here, where you can find information about the model and COVID Act Now, along with information on our limitations. To simulate the effects of various NPIs, you'll be working in the green Location and Inputs Setup tab. Here you can see all the modifiable inputs used in the simulator. Please note, only the cells in orange can be changed. Changing an input in these cells will automatically update everything else. Before jumping into it, let's define the two key metrics we're looking at here. R0, which is written with a capital R with a little zero next to it, and RT, or also known as R effective. Both represent the number of people that a single infected person goes on to infect in a specific area at a specific time. R0 is different from RT, because it represents the natural ability of a virus to spread, whereas RT is the actual or effective spread of a virus and takes into account changes such as public health measures or the development of a vaccine. At COVID Act Now, we look at RT because it's a more accurate representation of what's happening right now. We calculate RT based on actual COVID cases. Here, you'll pick your county or state. For this example, let's take a look at California. As you can see, the data for California will populate automatically. Here you can adjust the population, cases, deaths, hospital and ICU beds of the county or state. For example, ICU beds may change if there are temporary hospitals put in place. This model makes assumptions on the age demographics in a community based on census data. However, you can adjust any of these by changing the orange cells here, which will then impact the hospitalization ICU, fatality, and other outputs. The darker gray columns on the right lay out key metrics and assumptions. For instance, in this model inputs section, you can see a few variables, including hospitalization rate, hospital bed utilization, case fatality rate, or CFR, and increase in CFR if hospitals are overloaded, all of which you can modify to better represent what is happening in your community. In this section, we note a few additional assumptions. Our model is updated every three days. We assume a recovery period of 12 days, and we assume that someone stays contagious for six days after they are first infected. As a note, our assumptions are based on published research, but you can modify both the recovery and contagious period in this model. Here, we lay out our RT assumptions. Currently, the default R0 is 2.4 meaning that every infected individual will infect on average 2.4 other people during the six days they are contagious. We should note that 2.4 is conservative since most literature suggests that R0 is closer to 3 or 3.5. Details on that literature can be found in the purple tab called Model NPI RT Estimator here. Now let's take a look at some potential NPIs. Here we have listed several interventions including closing schools and universities, canceling large events, closing bars and restaurants, offices, factories, places of worship, personal care, which includes beauty salons, barbers, and gyms, non-essential retail, such as clothing stores, essential retail, such as grocery stores and pharmacies, entertainment, including movie theaters, and outdoor recreation, such as amusement parks. It's important to note all NPIs can be impacted according to the degree to which those guidelines are enforced and complied with. 
Thus, the effects you see from various NPIs will differ from those observed in other regions or in research studies, which may be helpful as starting points. For our example, let's cancel all large events, close 50% of bars and restaurants, 50% of offices, close 100% of entertainment, and close all outdoor recreation. As mentioned earlier, these percentages can refer to both enforcement and compliance. For instance, a 50% for bar and restaurant closures can mean that you are only closing 50% of the bars and restaurants, or that you have closed 100% of bars and restaurants, but that only 50% of them are complying. Likewise, just because you have a shelter in place mandate does not mean that 100% of people are complying 100% of the time. It may be that only 70% of people comply or that 100% of people comply, but only 70% of the time. Compliance may also vary over time. For instance, perhaps people generally comply 90% of the time, but over July 4th weekend, compliance drops down to 10%. Compliance may also vary across demographics. For instance, maybe 90% of people comply, but the 10% of people who don't are all in high-risk groups, which means that there will be a disproportionate impact on infection and death rates. So bear these complexities in mind when using this simulator. Now, how will these changes impact RT? Studies show that closing down schools yields a 20% reduction in RT, while closing large events yields only a 4% RT reduction. This is due in part to the fact that people generally do not spend as much time in large events as they would in a classroom. This section of the tool allows the user to see how impactful each intervention can be. The darker green the value is, the greater the impact on RT. Again, we want to emphasize that links, links to the research articles that informed these assumptions about the effectiveness of various NPIs can be found in the purple tab called Model NPI RT Estimator here. Here, we can see that if 20% of the population adheres to wearing a mask, it will reduce RT by 17%. Here we can see that if 10% of the population adheres to sheltering in place, it would reduce RT by 13%. These two values are applied after the effects of the other individual MPIs have already been calculated. As you can see here, these interventions have resulted in an estimated RT of 1.38. Let's go back to the hospitalization chart output. Here we can see that the MPIs we've put into place have reduced the RT value to 1.38, which indicates that COVID is still growing, but less quickly than before. As we can see here, given this RT, cases won't exceed the number of available hospital beds, represented by the blue line, which will also reduce mortality and ICU hospitalizations, since everyone who requires hospitalization and ICU care will be able to receive it. Here we can also see how social distancing and sheltering in place represented by the yellow and red lines respectively, could reduce the RT value. In our earlier California example, we were able to simulate an RT of 1.38. But let's say we want to see what additional actions could bring the RT value below 1, such that COVID is actively shrinking. You can further modify the NPIs, for instance, by closing 100% of bars and restaurants instead of 50%, to see whether that would help accomplish your goal. Additional chart outputs can be found in the other red tabs, including for historical data and ICU hospitalizations. As mentioned before, in this purple tab, you can see how our sources and how we calculate the effectiveness of each NPI in terms of the impact on RT. In the three other purple tabs, you can see the projected cases, hospitalizations, and fatalities in your community over time if you were to enact social distancing or shelter in place. Lastly, these yellow tabs show additional data if you'd like to dive deeper. Again, for the sake of brevity, we won't be exploring the data in this particular video. Before you start, please be sure to make a copy of this document and save to your own drive before making any adjustments. We hope that this tool can help you better understand the implications of your actions upon COVID in your community. Every state and every county is different, and COVID responses are not one size fits all. We also invite you to visit covidactnow.org resources, where you can watch additional videos on this model and on other related topics. You can also email us at info at covidactnow.org if you have any questions.